Well, hi again, everybody. This is Greg, back to talk a little bit more about my rooftop solar panels. Now, in a video I made just uh, a few days ago, I talked about how online monitoring might be different depending on who, who sold you your solar panels. So I talked about how uh, the online monitoring for me didn't have a lot of information. But my friend, who bought his solar panels from another company, if he goes online and uh, logs in, he sees a lot more detailed information about what his solar panels are doing. Well, I posted that video, and then just a few days later, I logged in again on uh, the web portal for looking at my solar panels. And lo and behold, they had changed the interface, and suddenly, where I was looking, uh, to get information about my solar panels, uh, there was a, a lot more information in there. So previously, uh, it told me how much they had generated that specific day, and then it had a place where it would show you what was the amount of electricity generated in the previous seven days, and then also for the, the total for that month, and then the total for the lifetime of the inverter. So, okay, that's pretty good information, but unless you actually record that information every single day, that website might not be very useful to you. For example, what if I wanted to know how much electricity did we generate two days ago? Well, looking at the information on that page, I wouldn't know unless I had already taken note of what it was two days previous and then compared, you know, today with that other day. Anyway, uh, but now let me just show you what's on there now. So now I get this nice readout that shows me how much I generated today, how much I've generated for the week and the month and the year, and it has historical information. So I can go back and say, well, what was it yesterday? What was the day, the day before? What was it seven days ago? What was it last year on this date? It's all there, and you can break it down. Uh, you can look at the, the total for the day, but it will also show you the total hour by hour for that day. So that's really interesting. So let me just uh, give, you, give you a quick example of that. And let's pick a day from the, the last few months that was probably the best day we've had all year for generating a lot of electricity. And that was June 14th. So. On that date, it shows me that we generated 52.6 kilowatt hours total for the day. But then if you break that down hour by hour, you can see that uh, starting at the 6 a.m. hour, we got just a little bit, 0.1 kilowatt hours, a little bit more the next hour, and then it really jumped up so that by about 1 or 2 in the afternoon, we were generating 6 kilowatt hours per hour. So that means the, the, the total that the panels were producing during those hours was, you know, somewhere up above 6,000 watts. So for a, for a whole hour of that, then you get 6,000 watt hours or 6 kilowatt hours. And you can see by the graph that is now part of the web page, how uh, it, it starts off slow and goes up a nice little curve up to the peak there in the, um, in the early afternoon. And then after you reach about 6 p.m., it drops down dramatically because, of course, the sun is pretty far down low in the sky at that point. But that shows me the optimal generation on the best day we had. So I can assume that that day there were no clouds, you know, no, no rain, obviously, if there were no clouds. That was our best day ever. So uh, now I compare that to maybe the day before, June 13th. And I can see, just looking at the graph, that, well, obviously it wasn't going to be as much. The total for the day was uh, 20 kilowatt hours less, only 32.3. But you can see there, by looking at the, that, that graph of hour by hour through the day, that it was probably cloudy in the morning all the way up until maybe one or two in the afternoon. And it might have been cloudy, it might have been raining that day for all I know. Uh, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't keep track of that. But uh, yeah, that shows you a pretty good representation of what happens on a day when there might be clouds and or rain. And then, uh, just by comparison, let's look at the day before that, June 12th. And you can see that graph is kind of all over the place. Maybe it was a little bit cloudy, then it got uh, pretty sunny in the early afternoon, then it got cloudy again. So yeah, you compare those kind of jagged graphs to this nice, smooth, curved graph for the day when we had our best generation. Now, it's interesting because, uh, okay, June 14th, that's pretty much uh, 
going to be the best day for uh, the sun being at its highest point in the sky. Uh, maybe a week later would have been better, but uh, we had clouds or something on that day, that first day of summer, you know. So compare that when the sun is at its highest point in the sky to something more recent, uh, maybe just a, a week or two ago as I'm recording this. Okay, so here's the graph for November 28th, which was a pretty sunny day. Now, granted, it's November. We're only about three weeks away from what's called the shortest day of the year, or the winter solstice, when the sun uh, at its highest point in the sky is actually the lowest it's going to be all year. So here we are, uh, November 28th, like I said, it was, it was a pretty good day, not a cloud in the sky kind of a day, and we only generated 17.9 kilowatt hours on that uh, primary set of solar panels that we have. So and that's to be expected because of the change of seasons, and if, also if you compare the graph for uh, you know the hourly production for that day, uh, you can see that it's, uh, it's a little more steep going up to its peak, you know, the, the peak only being about three and a half kilowatt hours for that hour. So instead of generating more than 6,000 watts during that hour, uh, the panels were maxing out at about 3,600 watts. So, okay, but that's to be expected. It's just interesting to analyze this information. So here's a really good day for November compared to a really good day for June. And uh, okay, and, and again, that's just uh, our first set of solar panels. Now all this is gonna be a little bit different uh, coming up this next time around because we're going to be having uh, the other set of solar panels operating during the summer. And that's on a different inverter, so I'd have to log in with a different account to look at that inverter. But th the point being, all that information is there now, and it's historical. It goes back and shows me the entire year. I can see a graph of how much we generated throughout the year on a month-by-month -month basis. I can dig into that and choose a specific month, and it'll show me a graph for every day of that month. And it goes all the way back to, well, this complete year. And it actually goes all the way back to last year when the solar panels first went into operation. If I look at the graph for last year, it's obviously showing me that we didn't generate anything uh, un until September. And that's true. Our panels were installed in June, but they weren't put into operation. We didn't have the net meter and everything we needed in place to put the panels into operation. That didn't happen until September. So then we get our total for September and then, you know, it goes down because that's a seasonal thing because, of course, after September, uh, you're going to get shorter and shorter uh, daylight times during the day. They call it shorter days, but it's, you know, shorter daylight. Just to be accurate, just to be precise. Uh, so yeah, then we see, so we can compare the, the end of 2016 with the beginning of 2017. And again, that's our whole uh, complete history, something that wasn't available on the web monitoring when I started. And in fact, wasn't available until just a few days ago as I'm making this video. So that's kind of nice. It means that, uh, as far as web monitoring is concerned, what I have available to me now is, um, pretty much the same as what uh, my friend has had previously. And I was jealous of what he had and thought, oh, okay, he bought from a different company, so he got something better. Well, now the company that I bought from has improved the web monitoring, uh, you know, the website there with more information. And I'm, I'm, so that's kind of cool. So it still doesn't show me automatically <laughs> how much the net meter is interacting with, with the grid. So that's something that I still have to go out and if I want those numbers on a day-to-day -day basis, if I, want, if I want that data history, I have to go out there every day and um, make a note of those numbers. Or maybe just even like take a picture with my iPod or something. Uh, I can do that and then I can analyze the numbers later. And you can do that too if you're the kind of person who wants to analyze these numbers rather than just sit back and enjoy your electricity, <laughs> which is what most people would do. Just sit back and enjoy the electricity. Anyway, so uh, more videos to come, but that was just kind of a good news thing for me that uh, what I was experiencing has, has been improved. Um, and thanks to the, the folks at the company that I bought the solar panels from for making that available to me so I can talk about it to you. All right, I'll see you next time.